Hey everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create a parallax or 2.5D effect. So this just takes your still photos and adds an element of movement in them to create an illusion of depth and separation. So to begin, you have to open up the photo that you want to use. Now if there's a specific size that you want your end video to be, then I would actually open a new document in that size and then fit your photo in there or crop your photo to that size if you don't want there to be black bars and whatnot. But this is a 1920 by 1280 photo I have open here, so I should be able to fit it into any video editing projects that I have, which is normally 1920 by 1080. So I have a little bit of extra room. Now, to open up the animation panel, you want to go to Window, and it's actually under Timeline. And that'll open up this Timeline panel, and you want to click Create Video Timeline. So if your original layer that you're working with is locked or is a background layer, then either double click on it to unlock it or just duplicate it so that you have a workable layer that pops up in your timeline. Now the next thing you want to do here is cut out a foreground or object from the background of the photo. So this might be the person in the foreground, the object in the landscape, wherever there is that separation that we want to create the movement between. So in this case it's the hand and the phone. So there's lots of different good, good ways to cut things out in Photoshop. You can use the pen tool, you can use the lasso tools, you can use the quick selection tools. I have other tutorials on this that go more in depth. However, in this case, let's use the quick selection tool. And in a lot of cases, you should be able to get a good start with the quick selection tool. So I'm working on add to selection mode like you see here. So I can go back and pick up the parts of the object that weren't cut out in different paint strokes. Now you see there's this area in between the thumb. I can go to minus from selection, click there, and it should do a good job. Now from here, you can go to select and mask, and then you can use the refine edge brush if there's something in your object like hair or fineness that you want to get out. And then you can also do things like smooth the entire selection, add a contrast or feather, and then press OK to have your actual selection. If you're having a hard time getting a good selection in your photo with these tools, then maybe try doing things by hand with the pen tool. Now, when you have your selection, what you want to do is right click and layer via copy it onto a new layer. So now I have my foreground and my background. Now you should see the new layer pop up in the timeline as well. But before we can begin animating things, we also want to clean up the background to separate it even further. Now if you have a simple object, you can actually just use the lasso tool and circle it out and then right click and fill with content aware and Photoshop should do a decent job of removing that object especially if you have a clean background oftentimes it's not going to be perfect and there will be errors like you can see there's this weird line going down the middle so here's the where you want to grab things like the clone stamp tool lower the brush size and then you can do things like hold option to sample from one area and then brush in the other areas to get a more clean edge. You particularly want to focus on the areas that might show beyond the center of the actual object that you're doing. So right down the middle here, I'm not gonna have to worry about because it's always gonna be blocked by the hand. But if there's some weird things happening on the edges, then you might wanna clean those up for a smoother effect when we transition. Now we can start animating. So if we click on our foreground layer, we can see it gets highlighted in the timeline, and we actually want to drop down these two menus so we can access our keyframe. So before we actually add some keyframes, we have to right click on our objects and convert them to smart objects. This is not only gonna allow us to transform things without losing quality back and forth, it's also gonna allow us to add keyframes to our transformations. Now there's a lot of different styles of movement or animation that you can apply to your photo. For example, you can have the hand move to the right slightly while the photo moves to the left, creating a little bit of separation. But the most common one and the one I'm going to show you is having one of the objects get larger while the other one gets smaller. And that creates kind of a push-pull effect. So I'll grab the hand or phone layer and then zooming into our timeline, it's by default five seconds, which is fine for me in this case. You could extend your clips if you want this effect to last for a longer amount of time. And I'll add a keyframe by clicking this stopwatch button on the beginning of the phone. 
Now what I'm going to do for emphasis, since we actually don't have much room from the edge to start with, is press Command T and I'm actually going to start this transformation from a smaller size. So I'm holding Shift here and scaling down and I'll make sure that touches the edge so things aren't popping up out of nowhere. Press Enter. So that's how I'm going to start the animation. And then if I go all the way to five seconds down, I'm going to press Command T, hold Shift and Alt to keep things pulling from the center. And then I'll make things just a bit bigger so they reach the edge and press Enter. So that's the animation for the hand. But now at the same time as the hand is getting bigger, we want the background to be getting smaller. Now we can't make it smaller off the regular size without exposing the transparency in the background. So what you actually have to do is add your first keyframe onto the background layer and you want to press Command T and actually make it just a bit bigger than the actual canvas. So I'll press Enter. That way when I go to the end of the animation, five seconds in, I can press Command T and make it back to its normal size so that it fits into the canvas like it originally was. So you're not going to be shrinking things in past their limits. So now when I play back the entire animation, you should see that it creates a cool push-pull effect with the hand getting closer and the background getting further. It might be a little bit choppy the first time you play it through because it's rendering it, but once you play it back a couple times, Photoshop can cleanly present your 2.5D or parallax effect. Now to export this video so you can actually use it in projects, you can go to File, Export, Render Video. And here you can choose where you want it to save, so on your desktop, on a folder on your desktop. And here's the sizes that I was talking about. Now there is a YouTube 1080p preset if you're planning to upload it to YouTube or have it ready to fit into a YouTube video project. However, like I said, this original document, which is, let's just click high quality, 1920 by 1280 is a little bit bigger than the YouTube 1080p. So I don't want to do this preset because it'll add black bars or it'll stretch it in a weird way. So I'll just keep it high quality and that way when I render it, I can actually just drag that MP4 clip into Adobe Premiere or whatever editing software I'm using and place it within my project and it might cut off a little bit of the side because it was originally bigger. But again, I had planned for that before I started the project. And if you wanted it to be a specific size, then you should create a new project in that size and fit your photo in there before you start doing the animations in the timeline. So that's how to create a 2.5D or parallax effect. Again, get creative with the way you want, you want things to move. And just remember not to ever expose any transparencies and create any weird edges. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, definitely leave a like on it. Let me know what you thought in the comments and check out the Photoshop tutorial playlist on my channel for more Photoshop tutorials and definitely subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all new future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.